So keep it simple. And here is a lot of the confusion I have seen. You have to distinguish between system, processes, elements, and tools. Let me just explain. You remember this? How many of you have seen it more than twice? Well, that's what you see now. That's a repetitive thing. And believe me, do your own circle. If you take this one or you make your own, but it's a communication tool that you can actually talk to people and say, now, this is the area we work in. Remember that. That's so we can do this better. And it has to do that, because it's a communication tool as I see it. Now, OK, this is what we call the system. Tools, what are those? Well, I would say computer system support. The computer system is a tool, right? You will never be successful implementing a CMMS, computerized maintenance management system, by starting from the system and forcing that through. You need to fix the processes people work in. And I can tell you, any of these good computer systems on the market can do what you want them to do. They can. I, uh, there are some few exceptions, like typical, uh, many of the bigger systems can't do a route-based PM route. They all say they can, but I can tell you they can't. They do it in a work order, and you create an absolute disaster if you would like to optimize maintenance, right? So you have one mechanical route, one electrical route, one lubrication route, and then all the operators are going to do this, and you can't connect all of it. You need to have a system where you can say, on that equipment number, this is all the PMs we do, and these are the different categories and frequencies we do, and then the system spreads that. Actually, I think IFS can do that. And you have a route-based system, I know that. SAP doesn't, a Maximo doesn't, uh, you might have some others, but it goes from almost all these systems that they say, well, we fix it, but it'd be a nightmare to change. It is a tool, though, right? A very important tool. SMED, how many of you know what that is? If you've been in the manufacturing industry, it's very common. Single minute exchange of dice. Well, it means that they actually, it's very much in, in, a, in a machine tool manufacturing. You know, it, just to change the setup of a machine can take a couple of hours, but the goal is to get it down to less than nine minutes, single minute exchange of dice. So they start looking at how can they change this faster and modify and so forth. And it's an excellent concept to use on common repetitive jobs and during a shutdown, the critical jobs, excellent method to use. I will show you some examples later. But it's a tool. As RCM, I think if you start with RCM, you never get through it, so be prepared for that. It's just one of these things that another three-letter ac acronym sounds great, right? Sounds great. Engineers used to love it, especially if you don't have experience from maintenance, because it tells you A, B, C, D. And you do this huge analysis to find out we need to check the V-belt. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, I work with a, with a big company. It's a, it's a utility company right now. And a good friend I have there, I met him there, and he said, you know, in our paper mill, we spent 40, 10 people, four years each, 40 years to do RCM. Because the, the system requested that. I said, OK, Rob, what, what changed? We did some minor changes because we had forgotten some equipment in the basic inspections. And that's what you often see. It has a place, right? But it's not the program, it's a tool. And if you could get the manufacturers of plants, or manufacturers of equipment, to do that analysis before they uh, designed it, you would see something. And it has a place where you have very complex pieces of equipment where you need to figure out bo both function and failure modes and other things to analyze it. But it still comes down to components that might. have in a different order. So the thinking process is going to be the same. So um, I'll come back to that a little bit later on. What usually happens, though, what we're trying to get away from, let's say a typical other mill that's not your mill, you have a morning meeting, and you say, well, the motor tripped out, costing a production loss last night. What happened? What is the first thing that happens in most mills I visit, do you think? What's the first question? Huh? 
Did they try solving the problem in that morning meeting with production maintenance there? First ones I have is you need a lost production report, correct? The first thing we need to figure out in that lost production is is the maintenance of operations. Is that correct? You recognize this, some of you? Maybe? No one admit it. So, so I mean, which one is it? Well, it was the motor, so obviously it's not operations. So the whole operations department just relaxes now. <laughs> it's not me. They stop <laughs> thinking, right? You lose 75% of the thinking there, they say, right? We say 50%. So maintenance. Well, it's the motor that tripped out. Mechanical or E&I? Well, that's obvious. It's the motor that tripped. It's not mechanical. It's E&I. So the mechanics start relaxing, right? In that very homogeneous group of E&I, right? <laughs> is it electrical or is it instrumentation? So now it's like, well, it's the motor that tripped out, so it's not instrumentation. If you build it on instrumentation, they blame it on process control, and they start talking. No one understands what they're saying, so then you know, they get away with it. Now it is an electrical problem, right? So now we've solved the problem, right? Production, lost production report says we have so much downtime to the electrical. And as you know, we're asking who. First rule of root cause is don't do the witch hunt. You've been through some of the trainings, right? Don't ask who, ask why or what happened, whatever you want to call it, right? And this goes into some type of lost production report that's in, into the system and saying we have a lot of problems with electrical. So therefore, someone, top manager comes in and say, we have a lot of problems with electrical. I, know, I don't know what we're going to use this data for. Can someone tell me that? I've been only doing this for 15 years. So I ask you, know, what do we use this data for? So once you have lost production report, electrical, instrumentation, mechanical, and operations, what do we use that data for? Huh? Higher warranty. Yeah, but they don't do that. They say they're going to do that, but they don't do that. We don't do that, right? Cost justification. Cost justification. OK. Could work, right? Right? And if you're using the data, fine. But most, most people we work with don't use the data for anything. They just have the data and collect it, and they don't, they don't use that data. What should we ask instead with this situation? Where am I getting to? Why? Who cares whose problem it is? That's a rule we have in our office, and it's not easy to follow. We don't always follow. I'm, I'll be honest with you. But it's pretty irrelevant whose fault it was. We're trying to figure out what happened, and then after you figure out what happened, maybe you need to talk about, OK, who's, who is responsible? You may have to talk about who it was at some point. But that's not the first question, right? And what happened really was that operations overloaded the motor, and the motor tripped. The instrumentation guys went there and reset it. Is the instrumentation guy going to go there in the morning meeting and say, was well, the operator did this to his buddy, the operator? No. You never find out what really happened, right? So <clears throat> we can't ask who. It's one of those things. So what I was saying here, in our process, what we really separate the two things. You have a thinking process, which is really the thinking steps, and how do I solve problems? The other one is the documentation tool. And you can use pretty much any documentation tool you like, whatever you prefer. I have my preference. Uh, we have our preference that we think makes sense. In some cases, you may want to use a 5Y. Sometimes you may use a six thinking hats. Sometimes you may use something different. And, and, and I think if you, un you just have a basic thinking process and teach that, you can use any tool you want to do. Because you'll get to the same thing. And I know most of you have used most of these tools at some point. They're very experienced.